going on guys, welcome back. We're searching for Kobe in the kayak today. It's eight o'clock in the morning, we're driving to the beach. Uh, clear, sunny skies. Winds, in theory, are light throughout the day. It should be increasing a little bit, but it looks like it should be okay. Right, these waves are kind of sizable. I much prefer to surf or launch a kayak somewhere where there's not waves like this. But uh, the water doesn't look too rough. The wind just started blowing north here as we were rigging up. There was basically no wind. Uh, now it's coming from the north, 10 miles an hour. All right, well, we got out there about a mile off the beach, and the wind had been getting stronger and stronger since we launched. And after about 45 minutes of sitting around out there searching for cobia, uh, we hadn't seen any. We didn't see any bait or any other fish at all. And it just seemed really dead. And with the increasing waves and winds, we decided we'd go back to shore and wait it out. Hope to launch later. All right, so we sat right outside the surf zone here for a little while trying to time, you know, landing the kayaks on the beach because if a, even a small wave can surf you and roll you in these kayaks, and you kind of have to be pretty careful. Let's see what Brennan has up his sleeve. I don't know, maybe I'm just a huge pussy. I don't know, right now, he's got it, dude. He needs to gun it. Yo, you've got it, dude! Come on in! Oh yeah, he's looking all right. Somehow that one, though, eh. Oh yeah. Oh, he got it. Oh, fuck. All right, that's what you don't want to have happen. Brennan got chewed up by this wave and rolled pretty bad. Holy shit. Holy shit, are you all right? Oh, there was my rod. Oh shit. That was sketchy. Oh man, see that's what you don't want to happen. We knew it was happening. So, Brennan had lost a fishing rod slash reel. That's rolling around in the waves somewhere. He also lost his GoPro and his sunglasses. And I took his other rod and just started throwing his epoxy jig hoping to snag, you know, something that he had lost. Alright, well I got so lucky. I'm gonna get one. All right, I'm gonna get a bunker snag. We're gonna try to salvage. We're gonna try to snag Brennan's rod. It's, it's gone. This wouldn't be the first time I rolled in the wash, lost a rod, and re-snagged it with a bunker snag. Has happened before. Oh! Got it. Yeah. That does suck. That is like pretty bad. That's a GoPro, dude. Or GoPro? <laughs> nice. 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 Yeah, we're just sitting here. Brennan's going to buy more sunglasses. We're gonna hope that this wind lays down and then we can get back out there, even though it's probably not gonna happen. But uh, for now, all we can do is wait, watch the waves. Look at that, look at that window right there, window of opportunity, flat, calm water. That's when you need to be launching or landing. It's definitely sketchy trying to land a big, heavy fishing kayak. I got really lucky. Brennan, not so lucky. Yeah, let's see if we can't get back out there. If not, I don't know what we're gonna do, but it's like 11 o'clock. See how this goes. All right, we've waited long enough. It hasn't laid down too much, only a little bit. I don't know, we're gonna go for it. I like how this kayak has this little feature right here. It's got like a great place to secure a rod. 
in an active swell. We're gonna need this paddle and we're gonna need a miracle. This wave, small wave, small wave. All right, take two. All right, we're gonna get beat up here by the wind and the waves, but it's all right. It's all right, there are a lot of Spanish Max, a lot of little blue fish, and maybe some, oh, spinner shark. I don't know, a lot of life, a lot of life. Great visibility. Okay guys, that's all we got. Humbling day on the Cobia grounds. Actually, the last time I was out here too, it was humbling. I had a couple shots last time. Didn't produce any Cobias either time. I got everything strapped in, so if I do roll, in theory, I should be good. I think behind this one, yeah. Oh God, no. All right, pretty smooth. All right, so uh, we got off the kayaks and I'm driving along and what do I see? Along the beach as I'm driving, none other than some birds working. Figure I'm gonna check it out. Fish are going hard out here. Multi-species blitzes. Like, definitely Spanish, definitely snapper blues. Looks to be Bonito, false albacore, potentially. Like some serious, serious stuff happening here. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can't catch this. Most of the fish are out of range, but if we're lucky, we'll get some shots. All right, we're throwing the Joe Bags Epoxy on the nine foot Shadow Surf Rod and a reel that I recently picked up, which is the Daiwa Ballistic, which was recommended to me from my friend Blowhard, who says that this reel is a trooper. Anyway, the majority of the good stuff that's popping is out of range. And it's tough to say what I'm really seeing out there. I mean, 100% Spanish, no doubt about that. But there's other stuff. It looks like Benito or maybe even Albies. Some bigger fish slashing, popping. And I don't know, we're just gonna throw the epoxy, see if we catch anything pretty blind here. I don't know, there's a lot of spearing in tight. See that fish right there? That was probably just a Spanish, totally in range. It's like a lot of snapper blues but there's some better fish mixed in. Let's see what that is. I'll let it sink down. I'm hooked up. It's probably a bluefish. We'll see though. I'm swimming fast at shore. That's a Spanish. All right. <laughs> All right. Not bad, not bad. A little Spanish Mac from the beach. Oh. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is a lot of fun right here, but it's not as fun as Albies. Albies are just, Albies are just better. We need a Spaniard so we can blacken him. We need him with butter. Butter, Old Bay. That's what we need. Oh, bluefish. I'm not gonna eat any bluefish. No, sir. Needs to be the sweet meat of the Spanish.
Oh yeah, Spanishes are out there. Let's see what that is. Come on, dinner. Let's see if it's gonna be a Mac. Got to crank so fast, it just doesn't fight. Bluefish. This thing hit so hard. It's just blues. That's all it is. I don't know. A lot of blues. All the good fish. Far out. Hopefully it's something. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's dinner. Alright, Spanish mackerel for dinner. That's how it's gonna go. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Alright, let it go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I like the way I like the way this one feels. I like this fish. Even if it is a blue fish. This one's a little heavier. I think it's just a nicer blue fish. Yeah, it's a blue fish. Just a little bigger blue fish. Fun size blue fish right there. And I did bring pliers. See ya, dude. Another fish. Yeah, I, think some, I think some nicer blues came in. Oh. Oh no, that could have been Spanish. Could have been blues. They're going off though out there. Oh man! <laughs> Blues are thick out there. Spanish? Hey, Spanish! All right. All right. It's actually it's actually an awesome end to the day. Look at this Spanish mackerel. It's pretty cool. I'll take it. That's enough for dinner there. That one's a little nicer. And we're gonna go ahead and bleed him too. He hit on the fall, which is interesting. It's been quite a summer season here in the mid-Atlantic slash northeast. I mean, for the Spanish to be around in this number, I mean, it's kind of unusual. And I hope that in the coming years, like it continues to happen. The Cobia too, you know, the Cobia and the Spanish. I hope they keep showing up in good numbers in the coming years, but it really seems like both species are doing pretty well. I know down in Virginia, uh, the Spanish mackerel fishing is really good this year. And uh, for New Jersey, Long Island, and point south to have them from June on. It's been a treat. Definitely unusual, but welcome treat. You guys go back to my, I don't know, go back on my channel like 2016 or something like that. I go down to the Jersey Shore and try to catch Spanish mackerel. I'm chasing reports of one single Spanish mack, like this fish right here, and I don't catch any, I don't see any. I catch some snapper blues and like a small bass that day. But uh, I was, I was wanting the Spanish that year, you know? It was unusual, it was really unusual to have them around. And, and now it's, now it's usual. So that was, I think my fifth one. 
And it's a pretty good evening session standing on the sand after a brutal skunking in the kayak. But uh, I think we're just about done here. I'm gonna go fillet those, oh, fillet those Spanish and cook them for dinner. I think that's a real good idea. All right, are you cleaning up that Spanish mackerel here? Yeah, these things have like a natural sweet flavor that I haven't really tasted any other fish that have a natural sweet flavor like Spanish. A little oily, but it's more that like sweet flavor. I don't know. Might be tough to explain, but you know. All right, so there's the Spanish mackerel. We're about to cook it. We're gonna cook it in a pan. And uh, first thing we gotta do is get some salt and pepper on that. A little bit of salt. Yeah, we missed some of that skin there. You know, that skin ain't gonna hurt nothing. All right, now we gotta flip it. Do the same thing to the other side. We're gonna hit it with a little Cajun. Get that Cajun on there. Uh, uh -huh. Alright, so our pan, we got it on like a level 7 here, we're going to keep it kind of hot. And we're just going to throw some butter on there. It's really hard to film and cook at the same time. I'm going to eat all four of these fillets. These four fillets, it's like perfect for me. Um, these things are going to like shrink pretty good. Maybe we wanted to let it get a little hotter than that. I don't cook fish all that often. I don't know if this is really going to be like the perfect, you know, method or whatever. This is how we're just cooking it, you know? Yeah, she's cooking up nice in there. All right. We're going to go ahead and flip it. See what it looks like. Mm, I don't know. That actually doesn't look that great. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but like, I don't know, it's not looking, uh, it's not looking especially great, to be, to be honest. I mean, it's gonna taste good, but I don't know. I think it, uh, probably could look better than that. Trying to hold the camera and flip the fish. That's not easy. Last time I ate Spanish mackerel, I just ate it raw. I ate a whole Spanish raw, and it was pretty good. All right, we're gonna need some more Cajun on there. Definitely need some more Cajun. Just a little bit more, yeah. All right, now we're talking. That one's looking a little better for some reason. Oh yeah, so these three are definitely done. That one's probably just about done. I'm gonna get them on a plate. Looking a little better right now. Let's go ahead and see what that tastes like. Hmm. Hmm. It's so hot. Oh. Oh. It's so hot, but it's good. It's good. Mm. They're not the best. It needs lemon. Next time I'll go to lemon. I oh, don't know. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's like overly good, but it's pretty good. I mean, I'm gonna eat all of it. It's good. It's not 10 out of 10 good though. No, but it's good. All right, well, that's all we got. I'm going to go ahead and eat this. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Kind of a long day. But, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, that's all that remains. It got better and better as I ate it. The first couple bites, it was not that great. Like, it was good, but after a few bites, no, nah, it turned into, like, banging food, and I just ate the whole thing, and now I want more. It was actually very good. All right, well, that's all we got. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. I'll see you guys next time.